In this short video, we're going to provide a proof of the fundamental lemma of the calculus of variations. I don't normally like to do proofs in an isolated fashion like this. I like you to be able to see what the need is for the proof before we do the proof. But in this case, it's a relatively simple proof by contradiction. So let me show you how that, that plays out. And then later on, when we use this in the calculus of variations, I'll explain it again in an intuitive fashion. So it's a lemma. A lemma is just a baby proof. It's just a little proof. So this is what it says. If we have a function g of x that's continuous over some interval in x from x0 to x1, and if the integral of g times h is equal to 0 over that interval, where h is an arbitrary function, then the only way that that can be satisfied, that integral, is if g of x is equal to 0 over the entire interval from x0 to x1. So again, we're going to prove this by contradiction, which means we're going to prove something that's true by proving what can't be true. So let's suppose that the function g of x is both non-zero and positive in some subinterval from a to b within the interval x0 to x1. And what we're going to show is that by making that assumption, this lemma cannot be satisfied, and so therefore, the opposite has to be true. In other words, we'll show that g of x has to be equal to 0 across the entire interval. The whole key is the fact that h of x is an arbitrary function. So we don't know what h of x is. It can be any function. It has to be continuous, but it can be any function between x0 and x1. If it's arbitrary, I can choose it to be whatever I want. So let's choose it such that for x less than a, h is 0. For x greater than b, it's also equal to 0, and it's only in this interval from a to b that has non-zero values, x minus a times b minus x. So essentially, it looks something like this. Here's a and b, and it has a parabolic form, 0 before and 0 after. Now you notice h of x satisfies the required conditions at the endpoints, so we haven't violated that. Now x minus a is always going to be greater than 0, b minus x will also always be greater than 0 in this interval, x going from a to b. So let's take a look at this integral, integral of g of x times h of x from x0 to x1. Well, if h is 0 for x less than a and 0 for x greater than b, then the only contributor to the integral is going to be from a to b, and that's our g of x which we said is non-zero and positive, times x minus a times b minus x. That will be greater than zero. We said g is positive, this is positive, and this is positive. So the function over the interval is positive everywhere. So you take the integral, the area under the curve will always be positive. Now that violates the lemma that we just stated on the previous slide. We've shown how assuming that g being non-zero and positive does not satisfy, and in fact cannot satisfy, this lemma. So the only way to satisfy this lemma is if g is indeed equal to 0 at every point x between x0 and x1. Again, when we need to use this lemma later on in our derivations within the calculus of variations, I'll explain this intuitively again within that context, and you'll see how it's used and why it's so important.